If you're new to the gaming hobby, you may have heard people mention their shelf of shame and wondered, what the heck is that? I'm Steve Tassie, the board game guy, and I'm here to tell you all about it and how to avoid the dreaded shelf of shame. Shelf of shame is a term gamers use for the pile of new games they've acquired that they have not been able to play. Now, depending on where you live and how seriously you're taking COVID safety procedures, some of this video won't apply. But if social gatherings are your norm again, you may find it useful. Industry professionals often develop a big shelf of shame because we acquire games at a faster rate than the average hobbyist. But if you're new to the hobby, the phenomenon is still something to be aware of. When you're new to gaming, Everything is so new and exciting. The urge to back every cool thing you see on your favorite crowdfunding platform or to buy everything at your friendly local gaming store or to seek out everything on the Board Game Geek's top 100 list or your favorite YouTuber's top games of all time list can be really overwhelming. You think, if I don't buy all these games, I'm missing out. If you're acquiring games faster than you can open, learn, and play them, Slow down. You're doing yourself, your friends, your wallet, and your games a disservice if you let yourself rack up a big shelf of shame. In my video on getting started with a collection, I gave you some advice on how best to grow your gaming library. It included things like to not splurge on a game and all its expansions at once right away. Look for a lot of variety in the types of games you're buying and stay away from crowdfunding projects. This advice is all solid for keeping acquisition creep down to a minimum as well. It takes time to really get to know a game. Sometimes you get a strong reaction to it the first time you play, either positive or negative. Many games take multiple plays in order to really give you a good idea of whether you really like it or not. And sometimes the group you play a game with can have a big impact on your initial reaction to that game. My wife hates auction games, so she's absolutely the wrong person for me to play with if I'm trying to figure out if I like a new auction game or not. Odds are you have people in your circle that are the same. Enthusiasm is infectious. And so is dissatisfaction. So when you have a new game and you had a strong reaction to it first time it hit the table, think about if it was really your reaction to the game or if it was a reaction to the mood of the table in general. Try the game again with some other players before you settle on a firm, I like this game or I don't like this game opinion. And doing that can be hard to do. If there's already three or more games in your queue that you are dying to get played, the fewer games you buy, the more time you'll be able to devote to getting familiar with the games that you do acquire. And unless your entire circle of friends are also avid gamers, all obsessed with the cult of the new and champing at the bit to play a new game every time you get together to play, your friends are going to burn out on gaming with you. For most people, learning new games is exactly what keeps them from playing games in the first place. Learning something new can be the worst. If your friends know that every time they come over to your place to play a game, they're going to have to learn something new, there's a good chance that some of them will stop coming. If three games ago you found a game that is a hit with a bunch of your friends, odds are that many of them would rather play that one again rather than learn a new thing that they may not like. And the smaller your shelf of shame is, the more likely it is that you'll be willing to bring yourself to play that hit again, or even a few more agains, before cracking open another new title. So do your bank account and your friend's patience a favor and buy fewer games. Because the more you play a single game, whether it's a winner or ultimately you decide that it isn't for you, the more you will know about your tastes and the better you'll be able to hone your purchasing skills for future purchases. Very few things in this hobby suck more than sinking a bunch of money into a game you've been hyped to play, having it sit around gathering dust only to turn out to be less than worthy once it finally does hit your table. I'm Steve Tassie, the board game guy, and these games here make up my personal shelf of shame.
Now, some gamers do prefer to call their shelf of shame the shelf of opportunity because language shapes thought and thought shapes behavior. Either way you look at it, though, drop a comment down below to let me know what games you have yet to get off your shelves and onto your tables. I hope my advice helps you get more out of your gaming dollar, or Frank, or Krona, or Bot, or whatever. Until next time, stay safe, have fun, and be good to each other. What? You're still here? It's over. Go click on another video or something. But before you do, click on the subscribe button. And then go. And, you know, turn out the lights.